You can learn a lot about a place from its walls. Take East Harlem, for example. Most visitors start at the south end of the community where early murals, like Hank Pressing's The Spirit of East Harlem, celebrate the cultural heritage of Puerto Rican immigrants. In 1978, when the mural was dedicated, few could foresee the role that painted walls would play in the economic development of the neighborhood. Now, though, the area around 106th Street, the heart of old Spanish Harlem, is called Mural Row, and it is the linchpin of public efforts to attract cultural tourists. Many murals have nationalistic themes. A good example is the Puerto Rican flag mural, which pays homage to a local campaign to pressure officials to get the U.S. Navy out of Vieques, a small island off the coast of the Puerto Rican mainland. Here, a portrait is embedded in the mural. It honors Lolita Lebron, who was arrested twice for participating in Vieques' protest, serving 60 days in federal prison. There are portraits of other community personalities, too, like Pedro Pietri, who founded the New Eurekan Poets Cafe in 1973, and the Cuban-born Celia Cruz, the Queen of Salsa. One of the most poignant is of Christopher Lee Rios. Rios, the New York rapper of Puerto Rican descent, was known as Big Pun and was the first solo Latin rapper ever to go platinum. A huge man, he died of a heart attack at age 28. His premature death focused attention on East Harlem's obesity epidemic, underscoring disparities in the availability of healthy food between El Barrio and its close neighbor Manhattan's Upper East Side. Other murals focus more explicitly on the social and economic problems of the community. For example, Banks, by the artist James de la Vega, alludes to the class change that is transforming some parts of the community as the upper middle class moves in at the same time that the working class and working poor are forced out. Other signs single out the small gardens, many with wood houses called casitas that cropped up illegally on unused city-owned land during the 1970s. The city of New York threatened to auction off the gardens in 1999, but most were saved just hours before their scheduled sale. Now they are open to the general public for a few hours each week. Saving the gardens provided community residents with reason for optimism. So does the work of Hope Community, Inc., an organization that provides housing services to low, moderate, and middle-income families. In the past 10 years, Hope has developed nearly 700 units of housing and transformed 17 vacant lots into vest pocket parks and community gardens. There is hope also because of the betterment of East Harlem's public education system. In 1973, only 16% of students in Community School District 4 in East Harlem were reading at grade level, and truancy was widespread. Fifteen years later, after the introduction of public school choice, 63% of students were reading at grade level, even though the schools were faced with an increasingly diverse community and the ethnic mix was changing. Puerto Ricans, who made the neighborhood their own in the first half of the 20th century, were moving out to the suburbs, and new groups were moving in, especially West Africans, Chinese, and Mexicans. Cultural events like the Mexican circus abound as newcomers grapple with how to fit into unfamiliar surroundings and still retain a connection to the cultural heritage of their homeland. Their preferences often clash with Puerto Rican traditions that have long been dominant. Clearly, issues of identity are now front and center. Over the years, the murals have become more cosmopolitan and often more controversial. In the late 1980s, artists began accepting commissions to create murals commemorating the lives of loved ones, especially those dying violent deaths. In the minds of many, they have also become conflated with graffiti, an art form that has come into its own despite efforts by public officials to restrain the artist. In 2005, Mark Echo, a New York City fashion designer, successfully sued the city when it tried to stop him from promoting his video game Getting Up with a public painting party to promote graffiti art. Still, a group of Bronx-based professional muralists who paint in East Harlem have done much to make the art form respectable. 
Known as the Mural Kings, or Tad's Crew, Inc., their aerosol art form was chosen to represent New York City muralists in the 35th Annual Smithsonian Folklife Festival. Many in the community now actively promote the mural culture as a way of improving the quality of life of residents, and mural projects involving young people are popular. Nevertheless, the role of murals is a tourist attraction that will spur economic development and benefit the community is not convincing to all.